In this video, I'm going to show you how to get audio mixed live in a DAW to your live stream using either Dante or NDI. Hello, I'm Steven Ballast. Welcome to my channel where I explore worship technology solutions. I've been asked the question here on my YouTube channel, what's the best way to get audio to my live stream? So this video is part of a series of videos where I'm going to show you some different methods. In the other videos, I'll show you how to get audio from your front of house mixer to a camera or video switcher, and also how to send audio from a DAW to your video switcher using a physical audio interface. In this video, we're gonna look at how to get audio from a DAW to your live stream using either Dante or NDI over a network. And then at the end, I'll show you a trick to make sure your audio and video are in sync. Before we get started, I did wanna mention if you're just getting started in live streaming, I have a new resource on my website with diagrams of my recommended entry-level live streaming setups. And these include links to all the equipment and even each cable you'll need to get up in live streaming. So be sure and check that out on my website. I've got links to that down in the description of this video. Okay, back to sending audio from a DAW to your live stream. Using a DAW or software on a computer to mix your live stream audio I believe is one of the cheapest ways to create an isolated separate mix from what's happening in your room for your video. And these two methods I'm about to show you, I think are the most economical way to get that audio to your live stream. Which method you choose will depend on how you are splitting your channels from your front of house mixer and getting them into your DAW. Dante is one really common way to do this, but some audio mixers like the X32 and the Q series of Allen & Heath mixers, like this Q16, have a USB output that you can connect directly to a computer just using a USB cable and bring all your channels in as individual tracks that way. Whichever method you use, the challenge is how do you get the mixed audio back out of the DAW to your live stream? The reason this is a challenge is that most DAWs, and this is true for my favorite program for live mixing, which is Reaper, is that if you're using ASIO drivers on a PC for your inputs, which is what most multi-track devices will use, the DAW doesn't let you use a different driver for the output. So you're kind of stuck sending your mix back out through the same audio interface. If you're using Dante for the digital split of your channels, one solution is to send the mix stereo channels back out on Dante and use Dante Virtual Sound Card in your streaming computer as the source for your audio. So let me show you how you would do that. First, you install Dante Virtual Sound Card, or DVS, on your computer that's streaming with OBS. You can download it from the Audinate website. You'll need a license for the software, but usually any Dante device you purchase will come with a DVS license. So it's actually rare that you'd need to purchase a license if you have any Dante devices. Once DVS is installed on your streaming computer and you've activated your license, you have to click Start for it to actually begin working. But before you do that, you'll need to switch the audio interface to WDM in order for it to show up in OBS. And the first time you run the program, you'll need to select the network interface you are running Dante on. Once you've done that and started the virtual sound card, we'll go back to the audio computer and in the DAW, route the main mix bus output to output one and two of the Dante interface. Then in Dante controller, route the outputs of your audio computer to the inputs of the streaming computer. If you're not familiar with Dante controller, it's software that you download from Audinate and you use it to create all the audio routing on your Dante network. So what you've done now is over the network, create an audio link between the DAW's mix output and the streaming computer's virtual sound card input. Back in OBS on the streaming computer, in the scene with your video input, add an audio input capture device in sources and select DVS receive one two for the device. In the mixer in OBS, be sure to mute the video interface's audio and now your stream will be getting audio from the mix created in your DAW. Dante has become a pretty standard way of routing digital audio over a network. This next method is a bit less conventional, but I think it's pretty cool and can be helpful to some people. What if you're not using Dante for your input channels? Maybe you're using an X32 or an Allen & Heath Q-Series mixer and sending your channels into the DAW with their USB port. You'll face the same challenge of not being able to use different drivers for the output. But there is a plugin I found by Voxango called the Voxango Recorder. You can find a link to that down in the description of this video. 
What it does is let you route audio out of the plugin to any audio driver on your system. So let's step back and take a big picture look at what I'm going to show you, and then we'll dive into how to set this up step by step. We're going to use the Voxango Recorder plugin to route the mixed audio out from your DAW to a different audio interface. That means you can still use the ASIO low latency drivers that come with your device for your input channels. Then we're going to use NDI to send that audio over a network to your live streaming computer running OBS. NDI is a new technology that a company called NewTek created. It stands for Network Device Interface. Basically, what it does is let you send video over a regular network from one NDI-enabled device to another. But along with the video, it also sends audio, which is why this works for us in this situation. So this solution is similar to Dante in that we're sending the audio over a network that's connecting two computers, just using a different technology. Okay, let's go through this step by step. First, we need to get all the software that we need to make this work downloaded and installed. OBS doesn't come with NDI capability by default yet. You've got to install an add-on plugin that will enable it. To do that, you need to download the plugin installer on your computer that is running OBS. You'll also need to download and install the NDI 3.0 runtime. Once those are installed, launch OBS version 21.1 or newer, and you should see the option to add an NDI source. Next, download the free vMix desktop capture program on the computer running your DAW. This is what will let us send audio out over NDI. What you'll get in the download is a zipped folder. Unzip that, and the executable that's in the folder is the program. Finally, download the Voxango Recorder plugin and copy the DLL file that comes in the zip folder into your DAW's VST plugins folder. Now that everything is installed, let's get it configured and sending audio. First, we'll configure the computer with the DAW to send audio out over NDI. Insert the Voxango Recorder plugin on your output bus after all your processing. Then in the plugin, set the Output 2 option to MME, and in the MME device, select Microsoft Sound Mapper. To actually route the audio out over NDI, there are probably more ways to get this to work, but it took me a lot of trial and error to find a way that actually sent the audio over NDI and didn't create an echo in the playback on the computer. What I had to do was add another physical USB external audio interface to my computer. You don't need to use it, it just needs to be there on your system to route the audio internally. So any cheap interface should work as long as it can support 48 kilohertz, which is what your video in OBS is gonna want. One advantage to having this device though is that you can use it to connect speakers to to hear your mix locally. Next, launch the vMix desktop capture program and in the settings select loopback for the audio source. Now the final step to get audio sent out over NDI is to make sure that the second audio device that you added is selected as the default device for your system audio. Now at this point, any audio coming out of your DAW is available on your network as an NDI device. So back in OBS, when you add an NDI source, you'll see the computer's network name and all of its displays listed. I usually just select display one. Click OK, and then be sure and mute your actual video device's audio, and you've now got your audio coming into OBS from the mix in your DAW. OK, now let's talk about getting your audio and video in sync. For either of these solutions, using Dante Virtual Sound Card or NDI, whenever you have your audio and video coming into your computer for streaming through two different interfaces, most likely they are not going to be in sync. Anything over 3 frames or about 100 milliseconds is going to start to become obvious that your audio and video are out of sync. So let me show you a trick you can use to get these synced in OBS. I have a video file on my website that you can download that I like to use to get things in sync. Basically, it's a bouncing ball that clicks each time it bounces. And these moving lines here tell you how far out of sync your audio and video are. What you can do is set this up on a laptop and play it looped. Then aim a camera from your video system at it and put a microphone from your sound system near it to hear the click. Make sure you are using the same entire audio and video path that you would normally use for live streaming. Then in OBS, record this for a few seconds, and when you play back the file, it's going to show you if things are synced. You can just eyeball it, or if you bring it into any editing software and look at the waveform of the click and when the ball hits, 
you'll see exactly what needs to be delayed. Then back in OBS, click the gear icon in your audio mixer panel and select advanced audio properties. And then in the sync offset, we'll add our delay. This is gonna add delay so you'll want to use whichever is ahead in your sync test and delay it the amount the other is behind. Then of course you can repeat this test again and confirm that you're in sync. This has been a long video and a lot to get through, but I hope some of you can find it useful. I really think mixing your live stream in a DAW is a great way to create a separate, isolated mix for your video. That's what we do here. This mixer is actually just a control surface for the DAW where we're actually doing our mix. One of the great things about it is that you can use Waves plugins live. I use a ton of Waves plugins on our live stream mix, and I've got a discount code in the description of this video that you can use to get 10% off your order when you purchase plugins from Waves. So be sure to check that out. I also have a whole nother video about strategies to get your mix in a DAW to sound good. So be sure and watch that as well. Hey, if you found this video helpful, give it a thumbs up and be sure and subscribe to my channel to see more of my videos. Until next time, bye.